Thanks to CuriosityStream for supporting PBS Digital Studios. Hey, smart people, Joe here. Picture five balloons. That was easy. Now, picture a thousand. Well, that wasn't that hard, was it? Not so fast, smarty pants. That's only 399 balloons. That's a thousand. My point is, we stink at imagining big numbers. The human brain is good at so much, yet so, so bad at big numbers. Let's see if we can fix that. This big number fail isn't totally our fault, but during our evolution, we only had to pay attention to small numbers, like uh, fingers, toes, how many people live in our clan. Beyond that, it was just, there's many mammoths over there, a massive magnitude, a multitude, if you will. And that did just fine until we invented science and history and started using really big numbers. When it comes to putting big numbers in perspective, nowhere do we fail harder than in deep time. Deep time is the geologic time scale. It's the history of the earth and everything on it. We're talking millions and billions of years, not tens or hundreds. And our brains are really bad at putting these huge magnitudes into perspective. For instance, my science brain knows a billion's a thousand times bigger than a million. But then I think about the fact that a million seconds is 11 and a half days, and a billion seconds is 31.7 years, and my brain breaks a little. You know Cleopatra, the Egyptian ruler? Well, she died in 30 BC, a long time ago, but she lived closer to the first Taco Bell opening than she did to the Great Pyramid being built, and T-Rex lived closer to us than it did to Stegosaurus. What I mean is, we don't really understand deep time at all. So I'm out here to put things in perspective for you. We're going to take an actual journey through the history of the Earth to see how long ago things really happened and how much time happened in between. The parts of the history of the Earth will be played by this pink string. All along this are different events in Earth's history, and the distances in between those events are cut to scale based on how many thousands or millions or even billions of years ago that they happened. So let's start playing with some string. Uh, here we are about four and a half billion years ago at the formation of the Earth. Kind of a big deal, kind of a major event in Earth's history. And apparently it happened next to this tree. Oh, the moon just formed. That didn't take long. I don't see it though. Cool. Huh, liquid water, love this stuff. Kind of a big deal for life. Formation of the Earth's atmosphere. Earth is massive enough now that it can start keeping gases close to its surface thanks to gravity, but it was mostly stuff like carbon dioxide, ammonia, methane, none of this sweet, sweet oxygen stuff yet. Still not a lot happening right now. The first living organisms. This is kind of a big deal. At this time, Earth's conditions have settled down enough to let chemistry start doing whatever cool chemistry stuff it took to create the first known living things. Sure, they were simple, but they're your ancestors. Show some respect. About a billion years has passed from the formation of the Earth to this point, but we're just getting started. Not a lot going on here. Nothing that important. We've got oxygen. Now for the first billion years of life on Earth, there was nothing really making oxygen until cyanobacteria showed up and started doing photosynthesis for the very first time. So they were just spitting out oxygen as a waste product into the atmosphere, and since there was nothing there to really use it, it just built up over time and actually led to one of the largest mass extinction events in the history of the planet. Whoa, I see a big event coming. 2.2 billion years ago, the first eukaryotes. What does that mean? Well, that's when cells got organelles. You know, like the nucleus, the Golgi apparatus, the mitochondria, the pa The powerhouse of the cell. Does anything happen on this planet? Oh, there's something. The supercontinent Rodinia broke up. Thought they'd stay together forever. 
Now, 710 million years ago, that means 3.8 billion years of Earth's history have passed to get to this point. And when you think about it, almost everything that we think about in Earth's history hasn't even happened yet. But we still have a long ways to go. Ah, 600 million years ago, the first multicellular organisms on Earth. That's right, all the life up until this point had just been single cell, but now we get teamwork, cooperation, awesome multicellularity. Only things like us happen a lot further that way. Something cool happens right here. 540 million years ago or so is a period of time we call the Cambrian Explosion. When we look at the fossil record, we just see this explosion in the diversity of life. That's when things got interesting. 470 million years ago, we get the first true land plants. They didn't look like these plants. They were a lot more basic. Things are about to start happening a lot more rapidly. So hold on your hats. 400 million years ago, we find the first insect, the first amphibian, the first tree, and the first shark fossils, although I would assume not all in the same place. 359 million years ago, we find the first coal deposits. That's right, all those fossil fuels that we've been digging out of the earth and lighting on fire, they started forming about now. 315 million years ago, we get the first reptiles. Not dinosaurs, not that cool yet, although they were pretty cool, they just weren't that cool. 280 million years ago, supercontinent Pangaea comes together. Maybe you've heard of it. 4.2 billion years has passed. We're just now getting to the first flowering plants. 230 million years ago, first dinosaurs. 200 million years ago, the Atlantic Ocean opens up for the first time. 180 million years ago, we get the earliest mammals and birds, which are still dinosaurs. This is all of history that we have left, and the Rocky Mountains are just now forming. Well, 65 million years ago, adios dinosaurs, that's the asteroid. 56 million years ago, we get the earliest primates. 40 million years ago, India hits Asia. This is basically everything we could consider human history. Australopithecus shows up for the very first time, an early walking hominid, just like Lucy. The first stone tools, the first controlled use of fire. Anatomically modern humans don't show up until here. And here we are at the present, and here we are in the present. Everything we consider our history happens in less than a millimeter from the end here. Looking back down the entire history of Earth dogs and everything. Stuff like the last Neanderthal, the extinction of the woolly mammoths, the rise of human civilizations is less than a thread in a thread of yarn. Whoa. The moral of this story is that most things happened a really, really, really long time ago. And we humans are very new here. So go pick up a rock and take a second to respect your elders. On the bright side, even though I keep getting older, I'm actually still very, very young. And now I can prove it with string. Stay curious. I want to say a big thank you to CuriosityStream for supporting PBS Digital Studios. A Curiosity Stream is a subscription streaming service that offers documentaries and nonfiction titles from a variety of filmmakers, including CuriosityStream originals like this one called Deep Time History. It's a three-part series chronicling how human history has been shaped by science even before we knew what science was. From the surprising ways that humans first figured out how to harvest energy to how the scientific revolution ended up putting salt and pepper on your table. You can learn more at curiositystream.com smart. Hey, so do you ever wish there was like a whole channel devoted to Deep Time? Well, good news, there is. Go check out our friends at PBS Eons.